pigeons and farmers chapter 6 ncert this chapter deals with pigeons and farmers of three different countries that is the small cottagers in england the wheat farmers of the usa and the opium producers of bengal india the comparison between the histories of different places shows how these histories are different even though some processes are similar. The time of open fields and common land in England. The agricultural system of England changed dramatically over the late 18th and the early 19th century. Before this time, in large parts of England, the countryside was open. The lands were not enclosed or partitioned by the landlords. Pigeons cultivated on strips of land around the village they live in. At the beginning of each year, people were allocated a number of strips to cultivate at the public meeting. These strips were located at different places and vary in quality. Everybody had access to the common land before enclosures. On this land villagers grazed their cattle, hunted animals, collected fewer wood for the fire and gathered berries and fruits for food. The common land helped poor to become bad times when crops failed. In the 16th century, the price of wool went up in the world market for expansion of wool production Rich farmers began dividing and urban population grew due to the rural migration. The growth of urban population expanded the market for food grains and increased the price enclosing common lands. They prevented the poor from entering the enclosed lands. After the mid 18th century, the enclosed movement swept through the countryside to fulfill the increasing demand for food grains due to the industrialization. Between 1750 and 1850, 6 million acres of land was enclosed. The British Parliament passed 4000 acts legalizing these enclosures. The new enclosures became a sign of changing time. The old enclosures of 16th century promoted sheep farming, but new enclosures of late 18th century barge for grain production. Further, by the end of 18th century, war between France and England led to the rise in prices of food grains. In these circumstances, Landowners had to enclose lands and enlarge the area between under grain cultivation. Landowners pressurized the parliament to pass the enclosure acts. In earlier times, rapid population growth was followed by a period of food shortages. Food grain production in the past had not expanded as rapidly as the population. From the mid-19th century, grain production grew as quickly as population. In 1868, England was producing almost 80% of the food it consumed and the rest was imported. This increase in food grain production was made possible by innovations in agricultural technology and by bringing new lands under cultivation. Landlords divided pastoral lands and grabbed and carved up upon fields, cut up forest commons, took over marshes and turned larger areas into agricultural fields. In late 17th century, farmers continued to use the simple innovation in agriculture. In 1660s, farmers in many parts of England began growing turnip and clover. Instead of leaving the land fallow, turnip was moreover a good fodder crop relished by cattle. Later findings showed that, this, that these crops had the capacity to increase the nitrogen content of the soil. 
they started partition crop rotation to increase soil fertility now enclosures were seen as necessary to make long term investments on land and plan crop rotations to improve the soil enclosures allowed only the landlords to make more profit but for the poor life became hard they could no longer collect firewood fruits and berries or graze their cattle or hunt small animals for meat it was due to fences which made enclosed land the exclusive property of land owner the poor found that their customary rights started gradually disappearing the laborers were employed only during the harvest time for a long period of time in a year the poor had no work during the napoleonic war prices of food grains were high and farmers expanded their production largely the landlords began buying the new threshing machines to reduce dependence on laborers a single machine could do the work of more than 20 laborers the loss of livelihood forced the poor to oppose the introduction of threshing machine the captain swing yards spread in the countryside at this time the threshing machines had become a sign of bad times for the poor after the napoleonic wars thousands of soldiers returned who needed alternative work to survive at that time grain started flowing into england from europe and the price declined so the land owners began reducing the area under grain cultivation thus an agricultural depression set in they tried to cut the wages and the number of laborers as they needed in england during 1830s farmers received threatening letters of not using threshing machines some found their barn and hay stack reduced to ashes by fire at night most of the letters were signed in the name of captain swing it was a mythic name used in these letters landlords feared attacks by armed groups at night and many destroyed their own machines government arrested suspects of the riots many changes were introduced with the coming of modern agriculture in england the open fields disappeared and the customary rights of peasants were removed the poor left their villages in large numbers while the richer farmers expanded grain production and made profits they become powerful